I've heard a very juicy rumor out there that you are actually my friend for life. We are going to be covering Bitcoin, Ethereum, altcoins, some price action and what's been going on. We have had the FOMC, otherwise known as FOMC, this week. There is also always some price volatility around that when it comes to sensitive things such as the entire dot plot of where the Fed expects interest rates to go in the future because the market has to wrestle what the economic data says and what they say. And we know they're always lying. So this is the Bitcoin price. We've done literally nothing for 24 hours. We are still trottling along this little zone. A lot of people think that we are making a lower high here. Everybody's just believing, oh, we're going to go down. We're going to go down, down to Goblin Town. We could, friends. We could. I'm not going to pretend that we know exactly what's going on. But it seems to be nice that we're holding up. Look, we kind of have learned now in crypto, if you're new, okay, it doesn't give you like a second chance. It's The market's always front running the future. So it's not like you just sit here and you're like, wait a minute, we're about to crash, aren't we? And like, you don't have like all this time to go, oh, we're going to be crashing here. Let's just go down slowly, slowly, slowly. What you will find is you'll just wake up one morning. <laughs> that's what happens. For example, like this candle here. And there are other candles on the way up, which I can show you as well. That happens. You see this, you just wake up. Okay, it's over. It was going down. This was the USDCD pegging. So they don't give you a chance. It doesn't give you a chance at all. This was the FTX collapse. You see this, just it's over. There's just the candles just come and it's just freaking over. You don't get this chance to like sit around and do nothing. That's why it's confusing a lot of people where we're going. And this is the ETH BTC ratio, which is very important. I just want to remind you. Okay, so yes, it's it's just grinding along this zone here and not doing much. This is a weekly chart as well. Look how tiny it is. The liquidity really is bonded. But I'd like to remind you, okay, generally, for some reason, in the fourth quarter of the year, ETH BTC sucks, right? Usually there's Bitcoin strength. I can show you it right now. So this is back in 2017. ETH BTC from September onwards crashed. We have ETH BTC here, September onwards, pretty trash. You have ETH BTC as well, end of 2020. Here you go. Look at this. Look at this, good friend. What about the end of 2021 as well? See this? Every single time, the last quarter of the year, for some reason, it's just crappy. See that? It's crashing everywhere. That's also what we've been looking at recently. I mean, look at this. Look at this. So we went up at the big, at the end of 2021, but that was the bull market. So, you know, I mean, we, we don't move, make big moves in the fourth quarter. If there is a big move, I mean, this was around the merge, this tiny little blip. That's all we could do. Look at that. Look at that. All we could do was this tiny little move around the merge. Isn't that nuts? So most of the time... Quarter four, which is what we're entering now, Ethereum ain't too good against Bitcoin. Will it change? Of course it can. We don't really know. All I know is you should be playing for the bull market. If you're just playing for this fourth quarter thing, you might end up screwing yourself out. And it's always been my belief that because Ethereum is in its third cycle curse, we're probably going to find that altcoins are going to start to do better earlier. That's what I think is going to happen. We don't have any evidence of it starting right now, for example, on Chainlink or anything else. It's starting to move up, but you got to look at the whole altcoin package together. And because I love and appreciate you very much, I have just created for you right now the altcoin to ETH index. Okay, so this is total three. So total three is all the altcoins and I've divided it by Ethereum. And what I've actually done once again is I modified it. This time, total three, I removed the market cap of USDT and I removed the market cap of USDC. And I've divided it by the Ethereum market cap, just to let you know. So this is exactly what it looks like. And you don't have all the data in the world because we only go back to like 2019. So we're going to have to create something a bit better than this. But you can see, look, it's going down, down to Goblin Town. So, you know, are we going to keep going down? I'll be very surprised if we do. Why? Ethereum is at its limits. Ethereum is in its third cycle curse now. So how hard is it for altcoins to just start gaining on Ethereum? You have other communities. You can take on the best tech. You now have Chainlink CCIP. So you don't actually need to be on main Ethereum. You can just use cheaper transactions and you can use... um better services and better experiences out there. And if an entrepreneur wants to take your data, they can use the CCIP bridge. So this stuff is coming in the future, but obviously there are no guarantees. There are no guarantees at all. So, I mean, this gets to show you what's been happening. By the way, this is a weekly chart, friends. So over the past, 
Here you go. Let's put it on a four hour chart. We've seen altcoins have started to go up against Ethereum. Isn't that funny? You want to know what this was? This was Gary Guzler, the semen demon from the corrupt SEC, him doing the final attack on crypto. That was this attack right now. This was when BNB, Cardanzo, Soylana, Matic, everything just went down against it. Look at that. Just had that final huge capitulation. So, you know, it's very hard to do any type of TA on this. I do actually like this as his bottoming structure. You come down here, do this big wick. This was actually, do you remember when we were here, friends? We were here at the beginning of 2021. That's how cheap we actually are, you know? I think we should keep going up. What this means is I think altcoins should continue to gain on Ethereum because Ethereum is too thick. They're just the liquidity required to move these things is just too much. We know people want to come in. They don't want to come and play in this sandbox with all these giant market caps. They don't want to play with it at all because you can't retire off it. What the hell are you in here for? You're in here for being my friend. This is the weekly super trend. We're always going to refer back to this because I like trends. Can't argue with it. You know, I've seen so many traders just to let you know. So many traders. Some of them are really good at like finding double bottoms. Some of them are really good at like finding turns. But what I found is not all of them are good at every time. And when you find someone who's good in one period, you'll keep following him, her, she, shim, and then you'll wait and wait and wait, and then you'll find out, uh-oh, you are actually the exit signal for them. So once we start noticing how good they are, you've either bought their indicator, bought their VIP service, bought whatever it is, and then they start mean reverting, and then it's not as good as they claim. That's what I found most of the time. If you, if you found someone who's got like a huge, huge win rate still consistently after all these years, please share it. The only issue is, I'll be very skeptical. Why? I've been here since crypto five years. If anybody out there was doing it, trust me, they would have all the followers. Everybody would know about it by now. Okay, so we're still waiting for this trend. Now, trends, obviously, the trends are great because you can't get the trend wrong, but you, it does suck. Why? It sucks when it turns because when it turns, you have to confirm out the exit, which means you can't be guessing the top, but this is the game. This is the nature of the game. You know those people who try to get those double tops? It sucks for them as well because they're always fighting the trend. They've always got to have this some master skill that they believe that they've picked the bottom or the top. Let me tell you something. You know all those master traders out there? Not a single one of them said we bottom down here. Precisely the moment you needed to go all in on crypto. Precisely the moment when you needed them to recognize that that was the bottom of all bottoms. So far, they weren't in. That's how you know most of them. I don't want to use the word frauds, but most of them are upselling their skill and they are downplaying the importance of DCA taking a very long-term view despite the volatility out there. And I want to show you this funny picture that came out. So Chris Bleck, friend of the channel, friend of the channel, he's got me blocked. Of course, he's got me blocked. He's got everybody blocked. Chris Bleck asks, Hex people, have you given up on the project yet or are you holding out hope if the latter why? So I love how Chris has this like, I'm a neutral guy. I just want to find out approach just to let you know. <laughs> Chris, Chris has blocked me and every single chain link marine and every single hex marine there is out there. Just block, 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 block. So he's blocked all of us. So I have to use this on, on another person's account. So um, the Pulse Chain ecosystem that he's asking about is thriving. I mean, look, look at these logos, friends. You can't fake these logos, okay? You cannot fake these logos. It's giant. The ecosystem is growing. It's, it's growing. It's huge. And, you know, that's what she said. Just some funny history. If you want to see some funny history, okay? There was a Chris Black stream in April 2020, and he kept banning Hex members for saying that the Hex contract was working as other DeFi kept falling, failing, okay? So uh, the people in the channel were saying, Hex is working, other DeFi is failing, right? So he just kept banning everybody. He just didn't want anything to do with it. Two years later from that point, Hex went up 127x. But then Chris Black, Chris admits he's driving DoorDash, in February 2023 this year. He goes, F you, bro, with your grifter BS. You made 43K last month from Rocket Pool. Probably a double that in total. So he's talking about the bankless guys. So he's replying to blank bankless up here, the trustless state. He's talking about them making money from Rocket Pool. And he goes, I'm struggling just to avoid doing my DoorDash just to survive. My job is thankless as F. You're the one pulling the grift. So as you can see, a lot of people, friends, this is what happens, okay? Unfortunately, the more... so. Just let me, let's just do this, okay? So unfortunately, the more you think about something, the more you end up in the mid-curve area because the mid-curve area is very hard to escape because 400 IQ people here, right, with big brains, 
they're always going to be there, man. You just got to be naturally gifted. So the only way to actually make it is to just literally lower yourself. So how do I lower myself? Okay, I'll, it's everything I've told you. That's why you like, subscribe, press the belly button and all, and you pre enjoy pressing all the belly buttons. So how do we lower ourselves? We lower ourselves by sticking to the basics. The basics is referring to the number of people in the network. Are there people growing? Yes. Is there more people left in the world to onboard? Yes. So we know this for a fact. That's it. That's all you need. Literally, that's all you need. Everything else, you just have to assume, okay, it's going to take care of itself. Don't try to look at this. Oh, is it, is it the inflation yield? Oh, you're not fulfilling promises. This is all mid-curve stuff, okay? Because when you're looking at things like inflation yield versus, oh, are you fulfilling promises? Oh, did this upgrade happen? You're now involving yourself in the world of probabilities of certainty and expectations. And once you start to go into that, most likely you're going to get it wrong. You're going to get the probability weight of attaching, say, how much you think inflation yield matters or this story matters or anything else matters. Most, most likely you're going to get it wrong. That's why a lot of these people who trade off these probability stuff, they're just big fat cucks and you shouldn't listen to them at all. Because what they do is they go, oh, I gave a 30% probability that we're going to go down and a 17% probability we're going to go up. These people, I'm just going to have to use the L word, they're losers. You can't listen to them. Why? Because, okay, it worked in that scenario where you got the probabilities right. But you can't possibly expect the next 1,000 people who listen to you to get the probability of things being right for them. For, exa for example, friends, I've only introduced you to one of these types of approaches with the Roca Negra scam ETF. So remember, I've always told you, okay, 70% chance we get wrecked, 30% we go up. Okay, 30% we go up. Do you see how this is just one nice macro approach. It's just one number, one number. You know these mid-curvers that say they don't think they're mid-curvers. They think they're actually in the, top, in the 400 IQ. They're not, they're mid-curvers. See, see, we're looking at just this one macro thing. I go, okay, if it gets to the scam zone, we're going to consider taking out, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, up to 70% because of the probability and maybe leave the, less, the next 30% to right. So this is just one clear goal, one torpedo focus. But the other mid-curvers, what they do is, okay, they evolve, they evaluate every project, every project, every announcement. They go off their emotions. They go, oh, did BitBoy like it or didn't he? Um, is the weather up or down? Is the is the Fed raising interest rates or lowering? What does the yield curve say? So they're trying to compute all these probabilities and they have a short-term view. So they're thinking about the next, literally, they're thinking about the next one to two months. And they're trying to find out, oh my God, are we going to go up or this or this or this? Look at these tree branches. You're going to get something wrong, man. And then when we enter here, okay, you got to go like, you're gonna, oh, which which tree branch are we going to go? And then we enter here. Okay, which tree branch are we going to go on this one? Okay, we're here. Okay, which, do you see what I mean? They're just doing it over and over and over again. The more times you do this, see, people overestimate their skill. The more times you play this game, the more chances you have of getting it wrong. So you could get it wrong like 20% of the time, but those 20% could be the most fatal of all at the very end. So I don't like playing that game. People who play that game, statistically, they're not around. They're actually not around. The people who do win the game, they go, you know what? Um, I'm waiting to 2025 and I'll see you then. That's it. There's more people left to onboard. I'll see you later. So just think about this. Think about like Hex from, the, I've actually, I actually drew it here from where the stream was and then from went up here. Now, of course, Hex went up capitulating hard after this. But just to let you know, okay, so it still went up 127X. You can't say, okay, it went down anyway. Like, for example... If someone came up to me and told me about Luna, now I had a chance to buy Luna at the end of 2020 because I just heard about Mike Novogratz and whatever, but I just ignored it. I'm like, now nah, I don't even know how to get it. Don't know, don't know where. And obviously I regret it. I regret it. I don't care that it went to zero. I completely regret not going hard on Luna at that time. I completely regret it because, because I was just like, man, I wish I just spent that extra effort just to throw something in because it went so much. If you have this approach of, oh, it didn't work out anyway, then you're never going to succeed in anything. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, are you going to go to your friend's birthday party? You're like, oh, it's going to end in five hours anyway. Like everyone's going to be home at one o'clock. I'm not going to go. You can't have that approach, man. You got to keep trying and persisting. So that's why you look at the price chart. It doesn't just tell you everything, even though, yes, the price moves first, yada, yada, yada. But you can't just look at a price chart. Warren Buffett, he doesn't start with a price chart. He looks at, okay, what are the fundamentals? Where is it going in five to 10 years? That's what he looks at when the company. So yes, we can't apply everything in stocks out here, but you got to learn from someone. You go, okay, how is this freak of nature? How is he consistently smashing it? What was his approach? And he was constantly aligning himself with the future. 
He constantly thinks, okay, for example, razor blades with Gillette. Are people going to stop shaving in 10 years? No, they're not. I think it's a good bet. Do you see what I mean? So for us, we're thinking, okay, are people going to stop coming into crypto? A lot of people say, oh, there's no use case. I go, you know what, man? The fact that you can have a dream and hopium and a community and somewhere to belong and there's a casino here too, I think that's a good enough use case. Yeah, let's be intellectually honest. Yeah, financial casino is a big part of it. Don't shy away from that. It's the truth, okay? Just like the internet. Like the internet has naked people everywhere. Don't shy away from it. 33% of the internet is literally people just looking at other people naked and engaging in premarital relations, okay? So this is the pulse pulse chart. If you put on log chart, it looks a bit better. Obviously, nothing makes it look better. The prices are going down. But at the end of the day, I mean, what are you going to be in for? If you're only going to be in coins that go up, unfortunately, you're always going to be doomed to be exit liquidity because people will only tell you things that go up when they're excited to tell you that they're 10x on side. But guess what? They don't tell you that they're 10x on side. What they'll tell you is it's about to go 1,000x. You better get in now. That's why I have more confidence in something like this. I can look at the fundamentals and we're just going to wait and see how it plays out. We're ultimately waiting for Bitcoin Ethereum to reprice higher. And make sure you tell mom and dad we love and appreciate them. I'm going to catch you in the next one.